Welcome to Naked Real Estate, the barrier free experience. Today we're going to talk about why is it important to fail and succeed in both bust and boom markets. You're probably wondering, how the hell does one fail in a boom market? Doesn't everybody make money in a boom market? Right? That's the kind of the, you're probably wondering, why the hell am I even talking about that? So the reason why it's important to fail in a boom market is because that's when people get caught up in the whole real estate rush. It's in the boom market. It's everyone's bidding up the price and everyone's getting excited. And they're thinking, oh my God, I'm going to make that 10, 15, 20, 50% a year increase. I'm going to be rich. You know, and for people who think, nah, that'll never happen to me. If you've ever been in a real estate boom and actually invested in it and not just sit there and talk bad and say, oh, watch these suckers get caught. And then when the market turns, you sit there and laugh. And then you watch through many real estate cycles as many other people make money. And some lose money, of course. Right? And those are the naysayers who kind of sit back and just talk about how they avoided things. But those people typically don't really have much because they've never risked to gain anything. So therefore, they don't really gain or lose much. It's just kind of steady eddy, which is fine by, you know, fine by me. But, you know, I think it's one of those things. You can't talk trash about somebody that, you know, that you don't have the balls to do. You know, I, I used to talk bad about those people who sing karaoke. But I thought about it. I have no right to talk trash about them because I don't got the balls to do what they got to do. So going back to my story of why it's important to fail in boom markets is because typical boom bust cycles will have certain behaviors, you know, telltale signs that tell you, hey, maybe I should slow down. Maybe I should take a breath. Maybe I should think about what my expectations of investing are and not over leverage myself thinking, you're going to make a killing every time. And the only time you'll actually slow down and take a breath is when you've actually failed. Because if you've never failed and gotten lucky enough times, you're always betting that the market's going up because you've never lost money. And simple human being, if you've never lost money, you think you're invincible. Right? Think, think about a time in life where you've never lost, that you've had a long winning streak. But then all of a sudden guess what? You will eventually lose. And typically someone who's got a lot of false confidence built up on only successful markets usually takes a knockout blow. And those are the guys who are pretty much uh, going into bankruptcy and receivership is they overbet it on themselves and their expertise when they've never lost money. Personally, I would never invest money with somebody who has never lost money. Why? It's because they don't have, somebody who's never lost money does not have the knowledge or the experience that if the market were to turn, what might they do? Myself, I've been through two boom and bust markets, lost money in both and made money in both. So when I'm advising clients on real estate investments, the first thing that I do is I give them reasonable expectations for uh, profit return. Second thing that I do is that I tell them, here's what might happen. Here's what might happen you know, with the renters or here's what might happen with the market. Are you okay with that? And everyone always talks about being okay about losing money, but when it comes down to losing money, totally different story. That's when you see the men and the mice uh, separate each other. Is when stuff actually happens that's when you see who's real about, oh yeah, you know what, John, I understand you said it, it's cool versus, oh, John, I don't remember you saying that. So that's why I'm very clear on setting expectations for my clients. Another thing, why is it important to succeed seed in boom in bust markets? Here's the reality. If, you're, if you've never succeeded in a bust market, you, you've never really made how do we say, an informed investment decision when everyone else is scared out of the market. 
investing in bus markets is where you make majority of your money. Why? Because you're investing in times when everyone else is too scared and that's when you get the best prices and you make your money as the market rises up. Most unseasoned investors typically are too scared to invest in bus markets because they don't know where the bottom's at. They're always trying to, to, to time the market. They want to get in when it's at the absolute low and they always want to, you know, um, they always want to get out at the absolute peak. But guess what? Fear and greed don't work like that. Greed keeps you in on those high markets and fear keeps you out of those <coughs> uh, bus markets. So you'll never have enough experience and knowledge to cut the emotions out of investing and to watch what's actually happening in uh, real estate cycles to say this is the time to get in and here's the time to get out. And no one's ever perfect, but somebody who has succeeded and failed in a down market knows when it's close to bottom because they've seen certain things happen in their market. Somebody who's never will always be too scared to get in there. And somebody who's lost money in a boom market, they'll know when to kind of ease up on their investing rather than to get in there and buy everything in sight because things are selling like hotcakes and all these headlines are saying, oh, the economy is unstoppable, right? Like you know, right now, this Vancouver market's been doing well for 10 years. It's never really went down for 10 years. If you took the typical real estate cycle and looked at Vancouver, you said, that's not really normal fundal, you know, normal real estate cycles are driven by fundamentals. What is driving this market? You can have your speculation theories. When you look at Alberta, you know, the, the rain group was doing the research. They're saying Alberta was killing it. But all of a sudden, Alberta had, you know, got its uh, lights knocked out twice. You know, once in 2008 and again uh, in 2013, right? Both times I was in the market, um, buying and selling real estate. So I got to understand the dynamics of a very, I would say, volatile market because Alberta is boom and bust. Here in Vancouver, you know, being a realtor in this market, I've never seen such a crazy aggressive market. Right? There's p Money's coming from somewhere. I don't know where. Real estate is crazy expensive. You know, the housing affordability index is through the roof. How do people afford to live here? Nobody knows. But there's still people buying and selling real estate and making a lot of money. So that's my two cents on why it's absolutely critical to fail and succeed in boom and bust markets. Especially if you have somebody who's advising you or giving you advice on what to invest in. Those people, maybe they get lucky, maybe you win. But I'm telling you, if the market were to turn, they would have made some critical investments that are going to turn really sour when the market turns. And they would have bought it in the boom market because they were overconfident in their skills. And I just also want to thank Tat because he's the one who actually inspired me to do this video. So thank you for watching my videos. Can you believe people actually watch it? And two, I thought this was a very helpful and great video to do. And I think a lot of people would find value in it.